Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. What's up? It's Trey White back with another episode of the Millennial Meetup. I'm joined by actor uh, Miles. Miles straight from Chicago. Hey, what's up, man? I'm Miles Stroder. Miles Stroder. Now, what's crazy is we go back, we go all the way back to high school, King College Prep High School. Shout out in I'm Chicago. Sad. Man, <laughs> I'm so proud of you, dog. Like, I just recently saw you on the BET show, The Quad. Yeah. How was that experience? Man, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, I've always been a superstar. Okay. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> I kind of switched focuses. I used okay. to be a football player. Right. And um, man, through time, my shit, my, like everything shifted to the acting. Okay. And so, yeah, the whole experience, like being in the choir, is amazing, man. So we'll get, of course, into the choir, but you know, you're from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Southside. Yeah, Southsider. Uh, you went to Morehouse yeah. University. What made first of all? What made you choose Morehouse? Because I went to Xavier. Yeah. And uh, I think we might be a little higher than you are. Oh, but, you know, so <laughs> so I I went to a, I went to Southeast Missouri initially. I went to a Division One football school. Okay. And uh, I transferred into Morehouse because I felt like I was missing out on the Black College experience. Yeah. And all my friends on that's when Facebook was popping. Right. And uh, well, I guess Facebook is still, still popping. But, <laughs> but that's when we would po you would post pictures and you got the yeah. Okay. And you yeah. The pictures. Yeah. I used to see the parties, yo. I used to see just like, oh, they having a good ass time. Right. Dog. You saw people swag. Yeah, 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 swag surfing. That's exactly. Like, 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 any, that's like the 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 this <laughs> <time. laughs> yeah. That and Boosie wiping hey, down. Exactly. Like, exactly. If you went to an HBCU. Those songs. Exactly. So those oh. songs did it for me. I'm like, yo, I got it. Something got to give, man. I'm having a good time with this football stuff, but I think life is about partying a little bit. You're right. Know? Yeah. And so I, I hit my homie up on Facebook and uh, I contacted my homie. He played fo play football for Morehouse. He's, okay. He was projected to go to the NFL. Okay. Awesome. And so, and so football is everything for me. So I'm like, yo, if I transfer, dog, am I still going to be able to make it to the NFL? So mm -hmm. I, I researched a player from Morehouse and he was going to the NFL. I'm like, yo, I'm at a Division One school. Hey, can I, I'm looking to transfer. Mm -hmm. Morehouse was Division Two, and so he contacted me right away. Like, dude, just send me your information. I yeah. got you. The next day, the post called me with a full ride. To what's, Morehouse. So what's really dope is that you can give the perspective, especially if it's a student that's a senior out there that's trying to figure out if they want to go to a PWI exactly. or HBCU. Mm -hmm. I really, I really, I think I got a dope perspective because I've seen the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, before I left Chicago, I went to a, a city college, I went to Aaron Watson, got okay. some classes, some credits. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think they should restructure the educational system to where you got to experience a PWI and a HBCU. Okay. I think you should be able to spend each year at a different place because it'll help you with life. Right. You know? um, life is about change. Right. And so the better you adapt, the better you are in life. And so, man, I can adapt to any situation because of what I put myself through. Mm -hmm. And so, but transferring to Morehouse was the best decision of my life. So there you go, you know, you're a student trying to figure out the school, then you try to, you finally transfer to Morehouse playing football. Now you become, you graduate. So what happened after life after college? For you? So, so basically I came out of college in 2010. That was my last year. Um, I entered the draft, the NFL draft. Oh, okay. And, um, 2011, the NFL lockout happened. Are you familiar? Oh, yeah, I remember, remember that. Yeah. And so, and so the players went on strike, and like I'm like, yo, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Because um, Morehouse is a Division two school, and though because I was talented in football, I'm like, yo, you can make it from anywhere. All right, my homie, just the homie that trans got transferred into there, but he, he got drafted the year before in the sixth round okay. to the Ravens, mm -hmm. won the Super Bowl. I'm like, wow, man, that's me. You right, know? you next. The very <laughs> next year, the NFL lockout happens, and I kind of got to switch my focus, and so. Mm -hmm. My agent that I was signed with at the time, he made me play with the Chicago Rush okay. in the AFL. Okay. So I played with him for about three weeks, four weeks, and I'm getting paid $700 a week, living out in Palatine mm. in a three bedroom with four dudes living with me. Mm. We gotta go to practice every day, and I'm getting these million dollar injuries, but only getting paid $700 a week for right. it. I'm like, yo, something gotta give. So I was praying, you know, mm. I'm asking God, like, man, yeah. let the lock down be lifted so I can <laughs> go to camp or, right. or something gotta something give. Happened. So I, I get an email, a random email from a casting director mm -hmm. uh, from this show called Necessary Roughness. And it was like, yo, Miles, I met you a year before on campus. Um, you said you were interested in acting. Well, the show that we were shooting the pilot for got accepted by the network. Oh, we no. start filming next week. Would you be down? I'm like, no. Oh, I'd be the blessing, right? right. <laughs> and so, man, I called my agent, my football agent. was like, yo, I'm thinking about going down to Atlanta to be an actor on this new show. I got a call. 
started laughing and mm -hmm. told him, well, yeah, I'm, I'm done playing football for now. I told my family, Yo, I'm about to be an actor. Okay. Everybody's looking at me like, you're crazy. Really? Yeah, everybody uh -huh. laughed at me, man. Humiliated. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm just like, I think it's something here. Right. So I moved back to Atlanta the next week and started filming on this show, Necessary Roughness. Mm -hmm. I came on USA. And it was just like a um, like background, but it was just work every day. You come right. in there, put on your football stuff and walk, walk in the background. Got to meet some dope people. Got to sit and talk to Mark Cuban who came mm -hmm. on the show. No. Orlando Jones. It was just a great first experience for an actor, you know? And so that's when I was like really paying my dues, waking up four in the morning, going to the Georgia Dome, doing 13 hour days. Mm -hmm. And not having my own trailer, having to sit in the extra hold and sell. You know, like, you know, that was just the setup. For that the was just up. the setup for, for the, the come, come up, up man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so man, I, I, that opportunity led to the next, and I was did the, some background work for the game. Okay. And then just did the whole Atlanta circuit. Then I'm like, yo, I think I'm ready to do this for real. And I moved mm -hmm. back to Chicago. Okay. And made a real lot of my background stuff and sent it out to the agencies. Got some headshots made. I got signed to Grossman Jack uh, Talent Agency. The year I moved back to Chicago and they sent me on my first audition, it was Chicago Fire. Okay. And I booked it. And from there, it was just like, oh, this is it. So if we fast forward to now, you know, you're on, I'm watching BET, <laughs> watching the previews, and I look at the camera, I'm like, wait a minute, that's Miles. I went to high school with this dude on this show, didn't even know about it. So, which brings to your character, Junior, yeah. on the BET show, The Quad, which I, I love that show, because it was just so relatable. To college, right? To college. Dude. It, 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 it was just a good show. So That's a good show, how, man. How was that experience? So, first off, we filmed in Morehouse. Okay. So, oh, so dang. So, you was back to your roots. Right. right. So, it's going to be natural. I, right. I couldn't be more natural than that. Right. We filmed. First day, of, first day of filming, we had a locker room scene in my locker room. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in my locker room. So that, that's a destined road. Yo, yo. The universe is so real. Man. Yeah. Just, just God is good. Mm -hmm. And, man, to film the whole process is exciting. I can't wait for the second season. You know? Right. It's going to be a good time. So, like, how was the process? Uh, I mean, how did you feel? You know, you, you, you put in all that work, you mm -hmm. put in all that time, mm -hmm. you, you you stopped football, you yeah. did all of that. How did that feel for that moment to actually be on the quad in Man, BET? How did you it, feel? It was just, I felt so deserving. Um, yeah. Because I've really been putting in work, man. When I moved back to Chicago, I wasn't really focused on acting. I never really focused on acting. Mm -hmm. It's just just kept getting opportunities. My focus has been in the nonprofit realm. Okay. Um, when I moved back to Chicago, I started mentoring football players so that they would make some of the same mistakes that I made in the recruiting process, mm -hmm. letting them work out with me and kill it. Kind of just like teaching them swag for a big man. You right. Know? Yeah. You know, uh, because uh, because I know you know. Right. Uh, and so then in 2000. And, 12, I met up with dude with Rhyme Fest. You familiar? Yeah, in so, Chicago. Yeah, so me and Rhyme Fest started this program called Donna's House. It's mm -hmm. artist development. Yeah. Um, I was the health and wellness coordinator at Donna's House for two years. And from there, I resigned from Donna's House and started my own nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called The Ticket Out. Okay. And so, man, I really just want to give kids opportunities that I didn't have. Show, mm -hmm. them, show them, introduce them to the stuff that I didn't know. I didn't know you could be an actor. Right. You know, I didn't know you right. could be a grip. I didn't know you could, you could be on the area. Right. I, like, we didn't know. We right. didn't have no programs at King. Like, yeah. we was just there. Right. You know? <laughs> but I want to be able to show kids what I wasn't able to see. Now, of course, you know, this is the millennial meetup. So, like, what does it mean to be a millennial and what type of obstacles have you had to go through as a millennial? Man, for real, to be a millennial, um, it's just freedom, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Especially this day and age, it's 2017. The internet, uh, you can you can do whatever you want to do. Right. Like, and, and that's what it means to be a millennial. Okay, Some of the hardest good. things I had to overcome is uh, kind of not caring about how people perceive you. Okay. Once you once you get past that barrier, you can do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it was hard for me to stop playing football based mm -hmm. on people. The world saw me as a football player. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but looking back on it, I'm so proud of myself yeah. uh, for persevering because as man, if you believe it, you can really do whatever you want to do. Right. And yeah. you know, we were, we we're from Come CPS. On, we're exactly, from the South side. exactly. That's and seriously. Okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Testament. We're like a testament to that. Like, do whatever you want to do. Right. <laughs> so real quick, so how did it, so I'm pretty sure you know the ladies or the groupies might have been coming out of the world. You remember me in high school, school right? Do you remember that, right? Yeah. That so, so, old so, work imagine, from old <laughs> so imagine Miles in 2017, uh, 
Basically, man, you just gotta be really disciplined. Dude. Yeah. Because, I mean, girls, I can have any girl in the whole world. Okay. Like, young and old, like, uh -huh. whatever. But it's like, man, be really disciplined and be really careful about who you spend your energy with. Yeah. Um, because that can make or break you, yeah. you know? And, and most, most successful people become unsuccessful because of a girl. Right. Or the opposite sex. Right. They got the man, they, they mind all messed up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just. Staying focused is my key. Yeah, and I think that's a testament to any energy. Mm -hmm. A friendship too with somebody. Yeah, yeah. That bad energy, that will wear off. Yeah, that, that will, will wear off you no matter how good they look, you mm -hmm. know? And so, yeah, be firm and be firm in you. And, I mean, have fun with girls, but be responsible as well, you know? Yeah, I agree. So what, uh, what upcoming stuff you have coming up? Man, I'm actually, I'm in Chicago for the next four weeks. Okay. Uh, just cast it. I've been writing. Um, so I just cast it for my first short film. Okay. It's about 30 minutes long. Uh, it's called Karma. Karma. And it's a story about this kid and growing up in the south side of Chicago. Okay. Didn't have no parents. His grandma raised him. His grandmother recently passes. And he's kind of going through it. And so, man, he's robbing people. Just going through all type of troubles, like the Chicago. Like, yeah. Kind of giving a, um, an inside look on what's really going on with the crime. Okay. And showing how petty these people be now and over, you know? And so, like, yeah, I'm working. I'm working, man. I got a table read on Wednesday okay. over at Center Space. And so we got some dope, man, dope cameramen, dope producers, dope everybody. Like, everything's coming. We're about to take off. This my video yeah. is about to. Yeah, take man. Y'all gonna, gonna see this name. We're gonna see you at the Oscars. At the Oscars. With the right Because I'm me, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're gonna be that legit winner. That one. Yeah. That one. Once again, Miles Stroder, the Millennial Meetup. Appreciate you, bro. Hey, thanks for having me, Sean. No man. problem. Hey, peace no and problem. love, bro. All right. <laughs>